Hi, it's Michael Shea again, and I've got the next phase of this discussion uh, that we're having about human embryos, and we're using these beautiful German models. So now what I'd like to do in this particular uh, phase is talk about the third and fourth week of development. And so let's take a look now at this beautiful little embryo right here. Uh, and this little embryo is probably the size right now of a navy bean. It's very small. And you're looking at the, the very back side of the embryo. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we look here, we see that this is the cut edge of the amniotic cavity. So that cavity would actually continue out here like that and be filled with fluid, but right now, in this model, it's been cut in order to show you the neural tube. So it's, remember that pink layer of cells that we saw in the previous models? Well, those pink layer of cells, they actually uh, form the neural tube. And you can see the bottom of the neural tube here, and then the very top of the neural tube here, and it hasn't closed yet. So this process right here of closure is called neuralation. And this edge, we look very closely, very closely at this edge. This is called the neural crest. And as the, the cells and tissue of this tube are growing together, they're going to have to close off the tube. But right now, it's an open tube, as you can see, with a seam in the middle. But these areas, called the neural crest, differentiate a very interesting type of cell and those cells are going to become your autonomic nervous system and those cells are starting to travel through the fluid and go everywhere uh, in the embryo. So this is the top of the neural tube and once it closes that process of closure uh, is called neuralation and that will occur first and then the bottom of the tube here will close and that's called secondary neuralation at the bottom of the tube in what is now your current pelvis. So you can see right here the edge of the chorionic cavity, once again, <clears throat> the outer edge. And you can also see the beautiful um, part of the uterus here. We can't see much of the placenta in this model, but we're going to see a lot of the placenta in the next model. So let me put this down and I'll bring up the next model here. And here we've got a different uh, longitudinal section. Whereas before, in the previous model, we were looking at it from this side with this part of the amniotic sac removed. So let's just orient, turn, right like that, and then we can see the amniotic cavity right here, and we can also see the length of the neural tube, this wavy line we can see right here the head end of the neural tube, the so-called uh, cranial end. And here we can see the very beginning of the human heart, right there. And we can see that the heart initially begins uh, being attached to the top of the neural tube and actually in the area of the neural tube that will become your face. So your heart begins attached to your face, like that. Here's the yolk sac, and this is where the embryo's blood right now is being produced because we don't have the capacity in the uh, four or five weeks post-fertilization of an embryo, what you're seeing here, to be able to produce blood inside of our body. There's no organs differentiated yet. We're still working on a neural tube and a heart, but we've got blood, and the blood is being produced right here in the yolk sac. And it is coming through um, very tiny um, arteries uh, into the embryo. And here, if we take a look now at the other end, we can see the pre-placenta, the famous villi of the placenta that are developing. <clears throat> These villi um, are part of the embryo. They're going to become the placenta. and they are absorbing nutrition from the mother's blood and that nutrition at a molecular level 
is coming through these rudimentary arteries uh, into the embryo at this end of the embryo here, at the caudal end of the embryo. So very strong uh, third and fourth week dynamic here in the embryo as we have the neural tube starting to close <clears throat> at top and bottom and the heart forming. Now I'm going to show you uh, to finish this a very interesting model and I'll try to hold these up together because it, uh, they're quite beautiful. <clears throat> but here you can see on this other side another model and this particular model right here is actually a replica of one of the very first embryo models that was ever made in the early 1900s in Germany and you can find the original model of this embryo uh, in the University of Göttingen uh, Human Embryology Museum and there's only one museum of human embryology in the world and it's in Göttingen, Germany. But here you can see uh, an outline of the same thing that we're looking on the left here. So let me put this down and let's orient to this model a little bit here. And we can see it's almost a week later than the previous model we were looking at and the neural tube is closed at the top. Here you can see it's swelling more to form a brain. And here you can see the heart has gone through much more uh, formation and is still attached and in proximity to the so-called face and mouth that are going to form right here at the top of the neural tube. Here we can see a rudimentary liver and here we can see the entrance from the yolk sac um, where nutrition and blood are coming in. It's a beautiful thing and here is the cardinal artery so some of the very first rudimentary parts of systemic circulation are forming and we're not hardly the size of a lima bean and we have systemic circulation occurring and that's a beautiful thing the cardiovascular system at this early phase of development so now we'll take a pause before we do the next piece